How's it guys and welcome back to Paradigm Flip. Today's video is going to be really interesting. It's basically going to be a continuation of my previous video. So if you haven't seen that one, I suggest you can take a look at it because it's going to give you some context on what today's video is about. It's a short video, about 5 minutes in length, so it's not really going to take up too much of your time. So today's video is going to be touching on momentum trades. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to find momentum setups that consistently and repeatedly occur in the market on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can enter tightly, where to set your stops and where to take your profit. So without wasting any of your time, let's get straight into business. okay so this was the 13th of june the day that i took the trade and the area of the trade was around here and it was for a sell trade and i'm going to be teaching you guys how to find these setups consistently and basically what we're going to be looking at is this little indicator below right and basically this is my little way of quantifying the strength of a move for my momentum setups and i'm going to be breaking down this indicator and how to use it and so you can have a deep understanding on what's actually going on here now i know a lot of people are scared of indicators or indicators are really shunned people like clean charts but uh, let me just let you know that this is not a lagging indicator this is actually just an indicator that uh, tells me what's actually happening in the market real time and it's not lagging okay so let's just uh, break down this indicator quick so what we're looking at here when we're looking at this uh, what we have is a simple macd right and i've set the fast ema to one and the slow ema to two and i've set the trigger line to one which is in red here just to hug the difference between the one and the two which is the histogram shown here and we also have some bollinger bands right the bollinger bands are set to a period of 1500 and a two standard deviation now i've set the period to 1500 to have a large look back so i can have a large data set to um, to analyze and you'll see soon why this is so okay and basically to get into the theory of this just real quick right so let's say this is our macd right this is our zero line here so we got our macd okay and this is our zero line here and let's say we have our two standard deviation bands here right above and below and basically what's happening is that you have the difference between the one and the two moving averages right in the histogram and what this is basically showing you is if you take a look at price if we just draw a one period moving average on price so let's say this is a one period moving average and then we have a two period moving average these two moving averages are going to be hugging each other very closely and basically what we are looking at is the strength of a move so if these moving averages are close together right it's going to show a small change on the histogram so for example if you get a small little move like so right the difference between the two moving averages are not going to widen as much so you will literally get a small move on the macd okay but the moment you get a very a very large candle okay when you start getting very large candles okay that cause the difference between the two moving averages to widen significantly okay this difference this difference between the two moving averages is going to be read by the macd and what you will get is a large move in the macd right and if it's a two standard deviation move right that's basically going to be quantified as a really abnormal or really strong push in uh, one direction okay and this is very significant because if you understand the statistics right and standard deviation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up this chart real quick and what this is showing is a normal distribution right and standard deviations so what you actually have here in the middle is the mean okay which just basically means the middle and on the macd that's going to be your zero line okay and if you look here we have one standard deviation on each side and two standard deviations going all the way to three and four standard deviations so we are more interested in this point here okay and beyond so this is going to show up as the yellow bands on our macd as two standard deviation lines 
Okay, so basically if we understand this graph, right, what we have here on the y-axis, basically, right, this is a graph, so this is a y-axis and this is an x-axis, and basically what we have here is frequency of occurrences, right, frequency of occurrences, and if you look here, it'll tell you here, so this is percentage number of cases, okay, so you'll notice that the bell curve rises and tapers on the wings, Okay, and at the mean, it's really high. So this means that close to the mean, we got a, a large number of occurrences. Okay, and what this is telling us that is within these first standard deviation bands, so within one standard deviation, okay, one standard deviation up and one standard deviation down from the mean, okay, we basically have most of the occurrences or most of the moves within this range. Okay, so this accounts for 34% on each side, so about 68% total. So that means if we have to draw one standard deviation bands on our MACD, that will literally be around this area here, right? So one standard deviation would be around here. And that means that about 68% of the moves will be around this region. Okay, and between one standard deviation and above, we have 13.59 on uh, each side, so about 28% of the moves will be just poking between one and two standard deviations, right? And from two standard deviations upwards, right, which will be these points here, right, we only got 2.4, 2.14 on each side, so about 4% of the moves, right? Will reach two standard deviation and beyond okay and this is uh really why we have the large look back period of 1500 so basically when we are looking at our macd what we are looking at is the last 1500 periods right and based on the last 1500 periods okay when we reach a two standard deviation move right basically what it's telling us is that this is literally a, a move that occurs about four percent of the time on both directions okay whether it's up or down it's two percent in each direction so this occurs four percent on average four percent of the time okay based on the last 1500 uh, periods and basically that's why we use a large look back period so basically i can identify um with higher accuracy what an abnormal move is right so within the last 1500 periods we know that such a move that goes to two standard deviation and beyond right only occurs four percent of the time in the last 1500 periods right so when we get such a move right it really tells us that this is an abnormal move right and this basically shows us that it's a really strong move and when we see such a move we are interested in um in looking for trading okay so that's basically the theory behind the indicator so let's go and take a look how to find setups okay so just getting back to this trade here this is how i framed this setup right so we see that strong to standard deviation move lower on this candle and basically that's telling us that we got a really strong push lower right and basically these are the kind of moves that you want to see if you want to see continuation so most likely these moves are gonna have some follow through and we're gonna be waiting for a little pullback right one or three bars like about one to three bars so you're going to find a move that either has one bar pullback right and then a continuation or about three bars for example in this case right um and just know that this doesn't um occur all of the time right if you just have a quick look here we had a two standard deviation move right we did not have a pullback right but if you consider these wicks okay Right, that's basically a pullback before a continuation lower, right? But we'll get into explaining those. And if you look at the next candle, still a two standard deviation move lower. So we can expect a continuation trade lower, but this one reverses. Now it's important to note that these setups, right, do occur, right? So these moves do occur only two percent of the time to the downside and two percent of the time to the upside, so about four percent of um, the time. So it's important to note that when you do get a strong move, right? No one's going to be holding on to this trade. Most likely there is going to be um, a bit of profit taking.
okay and you really want to see that pullback so you don't get uh, caught on the wrong side of the trade or selling too low okay so if we also understand how trends work right just based on simple market structure okay if you have for example a downtrend right you always get a move lower you get a pullback okay and the trend goes lower however one of these pullbacks will be the reversal that ends up reversing the market okay so you obviously have a pullback here you have a pullback here you have a pullback here and at this point in time here yeah, this is also a pullback and we would be expecting the trend to continue lower right but not all of these moves higher are going to be pullbacks okay one of them is actually going to reverse the market okay so it's the it's the same concept here okay when we do get a push lower at this point okay we can expect it to either continue or we can expect it to reverse altogether and actually these candles are also good reversal candles okay because the fact that we got an abnormal move lower okay so this basically means that this would be a good area for a lot of traders to start taking profit right and start entering longs because if you if i just for example put a moving average on the chart just to explain a point that i'm trying to make here okay and i just zoom out a little bit here what you'll notice is that price is always moving away from the average and coming back towards the average moving away from the average coming back towards it right moving away coming back towards it moving away coming back towards it and then once we get across we move away from it from the other side and come back towards it move away come back towards it move away come back towards it move away we come back towards it and one of these pullbacks is going to end up being the reversal right and we move away to the downside and we come back towards it we move away we come back towards it now there are obviously two types of traders there are traders that trade with the trend right so they trade the continuation and then there are also traders that mean revert so they trade at extremes so when price moves far away from the average they trade back towards the average okay now we will touch on this uh, in a different video it's uh, beyond the scope of this but uh, basically when we do get a strong two standard deviation move away from 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 the average right let me just go back to uh, the area here so when we do get a strong push away right we can expect to move back towards what towards whatever average uh, you're looking at and very often these pushes right will end up becoming the reversal right because it's a good area for a lot of traders to get involved right it's basically an extreme and everyone is basically short and exposed to the long side and you will get a squeeze okay and <coughs> that's basically the idea so let's just take a look at some setups <coughs> excuse me and uh, see how this uh, works and basically uh, we'll be going deeper into it so just bear with me okay let's let's take a look at some setups see how often this occurs and how we can actually be profitable using this so let's just go back in some data and have a look at these setups so yeah we get a strong standard deviation move lower okay we get a pullback right we got one two three four bars which is still fine it's very flat it's very consolidated right and we get a push lower okay we got another two standard deviation move right we get a one bar pullback and a continuation lower okay and that's basically all that occurred that day looking at this area here we can see we got a two standard deviation move lower one bar pullback and a continuation lower right that candle was also two standard deviations and we get a one bar pullback and a continuation lower and same thing two standard deviations one bar pullback and a continuation lower we got close to a two standard deviation move higher which is still fine it doesn't have to be exactly at at the two standard deviations as long as it's relatively close right it shouldn't be far away right to the point where you can see a clear gap between the two you want it like really really close those are um times where where you can um decide okay i can take the setup or if you want to keep it to two standard deviations or above you can do so so you can keep it a little bit flexible you don't really want it to be too far away for example if we have a look at this area here this is quite far you can see the clear the the gap quite clearly and you want to keep it as tight as possible so this is quite close so in my books it's good enough right and you get a little consolidation here right we basically trade a little bit higher but we're basically consolidating and we push higher okay we got a two standard deviation move again on this candle right we pull back and we continue higher so this was a very good day for the strategy okay so we had basically one two right if i just do that properly sorry if we had one two three four 
five potential trades and all of them were profitable on that day okay um coming into this day okay we had a two standard deviation move here right we had a one bar pullback and we continued higher now this one is still close enough for continuation trade right we pull back and we never really we eventually did get a, a move higher but the fact that we broke the candle um by a large margin right we would have nullified this trade basically if you get a a candle right that's two standard deviations like you want to just keep it above the candle so the pullback you want to keep it quite shallow so about 50 percent of the candle or if we at least pull back to the region of the candle whatever consolidation the candle broke out from you want to keep it limited to that range so about this area so this pullback here right this would really be your your limit of where you'd be expecting a continuation move higher the fact that we broke that uh it nullifies the trade okay so we had one winner and one loss on this day okay uh on this day right we had a two standard deviation push here we consolidated and we had a continuation higher we had a two standard deviation push here right we pulled back towards the mean right or towards the um origin of the push rather right and we got a little bounce there but we fairly uh we fairly did okay we didn't manage to break the high okay hopefully like on a lower time frame you'll be able to move your stops at break even but we'll just count this one as the loser okay uh looking at the previous day <coughs> We get a two standard deviation push we don't really get a push but a pullback we get another one and we don't really get a pullback but ultimately these ones continue but uh it'll be very difficult to enter these trades because you really want to see that pullback right you don't want to be entering at a high right you don't want to be entering around here and then price ultimately pulls back and then continues right so you want to wait for that pullback and look for the trade for the continuation trade okay so in this area there would be basically no trade on this day on this day we can see that we got a two standard deviation push here we got a pullback nice continuation uh, about close i would say it's okay right and essentially if you take a look here we got a pullback right and we came and took that high out so we kind of did get a continuation right but the amount of bars that it took to get there was a fairly long time okay and this is going into the um the quiet session right so we can expect such a move but basically it did continue uh, continue higher okay so we did get one setup here i doubt you'd take the setup or if you did um you'll probably have closed it i don't think you'd have made a loss in this area okay um and let's just have a look at one more right this day there was nothing this day we, there was also nothing because we got a strong push right no pullback and just to move higher let's uh, actually take a look at recent price history and uh <coughs> see what um what occurs or what has occurred recently okay so there was this push lower right and this one reversed the market completely okay we got uh this push higher it was quite close right we got a little pullback and then we got a continuation these are too far off so there's no trade okay so yeah and on this day you had one loss and one win which is great um on this day we had nothing mind you we, we had this area here in fact right so this was an okay move right we traded lower right we had a strong push lower we had a one bar pullback okay then we had a continuation lower okay and it actually went on to make a quite a decent move lower right and then we had this strong push lower here okay uh close to 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 the quiet session and this one reversed the market okay the following day we had the strong push right one bar pullback continuation which was great okay and then we had the strong push here right we had a pullback and a hold little move higher okay hopefully you could get to break even since we came close to the high when you're trading on a lower time frame you'll see how uh, that's possible okay but ultimately uh this was one successful trade so far and possibly we can call it a loss it doesn't really matter but uh possibly you'd have gotten break even on that okay then we get a strong push lower here okay no pullback we get a strong push lower here you can see that and this one gives us a pullback and ultimately a continuation and then we get a strong push here and this one leads to a reversal okay and up to date which is the current day we can see we get a strong push here we get a pullback we get a good continuation we get a strong push here and you can see that we don't get a continuation on the next candle right we are still in the two standard deviation territory so we can still wait for a pullback now this pulls back all the way to the origin of this strong candle here so possibly this may have been a trade if you are quick if you are quick enough okay uh, or if you are brave enough to take such a volatile move lower 
right? But we can basically cancel it out since it's uh, not an obvious trade. Okay, so this could have been a loss or a no trade. Okay, so so far on this day, we have one trade and one loss or no trade, right? You get a strong two standard deviation push here, right? On this candle, you get a pullback and you get a move higher. This is quite far off, so we wouldn't really consider that. Okay, and currently we got a move that you can consider, right? Strong move here, right? And we are currently getting that pullback and we can look towards this candle to continuing, right? You want to mark up that origin of the area, right? And we trade into that and we expecting that to go higher, okay? So we don't really want it to break below the candle, okay? Uh, and close below here, right? We just want it to play around this area and that's going to let us know that uh, we are holding at higher prices and we can expect price to continue higher, right? So that's basically how you find the setups. So based on what we looked at, these... Um, two standard deviation pushes uh, based on the history that we just looked at leads to continuations more often than not but we also know that they can also be the bottom of moves and lead to complete reversals okay so if you are worried about this right i'm going to teach you now uh, how to think about this and this is actually going to be the crux of the conversation and this is what's going to be help you be profitable and consistent okay so this is the interesting part so just open your ears and stay focused now if we assume that these strong pushes, right, lead to continuations and reversals, and we assume that 50% of the time they lead to continuations, and the other 50% of the time, right, they lead to reversals. If you didn't know, these are actually very good odds. Okay. And what I'm going to do is show you how, just making this simple assumption, right, there are ways to increase the odds. Okay. And uh, we'll touch into that, okay? But just a simple assumption at face value, right? We want to look at it raw, right? How you can be profitable, right? And stay focused because this is actually what is going to elevate your, your, your trading, okay? So if we actually just take a look at this uh, standard deviation chart, right? This can be a applied for anything, right? So we previously applied it for strength, is strength of moves, right and we are also going to be applying it to probabilities okay so we know that the probability of well we are assuming that the probability of a two standard deviation move right so we have our two standard deviation move there's our large two standard deviation move okay this could either reverse right or be a continuation right and if we assume that the probability of it reversing right is 50 50 percent Right, so we're assuming 50% chance that it will reverse and there's a 50% chance that it will continue higher. Okay, now <coughs> if, we, if, we, if we look at this um, standard deviation chart, sorry, if we actually look at the standard deviation chart and we call this the frequency of trades, right? So if this is the frequency, frequency of trades, right? So if this is your frequency of trades and this is your win loss percentage right so your win loss percentage right so frequency of trades so how frequently you trade right or the number of trades you've taken okay and this is the wins and the loss percentage of those trades now what you'll find is that if you apply these probabilities of this strategy right to this curve right if your strategy has a 50 50 percent chance of winning or losing so for example if you are taking continuation setups right and 50 percent of the chance uh sorry 50 percent of the time they are actually working out right and you stick to only taking continuation setups right then your strategy will fall here and i want us to put the brakes on this for a bit and think about a coin toss okay let's say you are flipping a coin and it's a 50 50 chance that you get heads Right, and there's a fifty percent chance that you get tails. But let's say you remove the tails and you just stick to choosing heads, right? So every coin toss that you that that you take, you always choosing heads, right? If you flip that coin ten thousand times, right, I can promise you that with a high probability, okay, you will see that close to fifty percent, right, of your coin flips landed on heads could be plus or minus a bit but very close to it'll be insanely accurate right how close to 50% of 
your coin tosses will be close to his right and basically that's because a coin flip is a 50 50 percent probability now that doesn't mean if you flip a coin and you call heads and then you get tails right it doesn't mean that the next one so you lose one basically if you if you flip a coin and you call heads and it, it lands on tails right so you basically lose one that doesn't mean that the next one has to land on heads right in order for you to be plus one because that will equal 50 percent right that's in the short term and that doesn't mean that that will happen right we're talking about over a large sample right of uh, of data okay so you could get heads heads so you could win 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 and then you could lose right so you get your 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 tails right you get tails you get tails and then you could start winning again right then you could start losing you could start losing but over a large sample of coin flips right if you flip that coin 10,000 times okay and stick to heads you'll be right 50% of the time now it's the same thing with our strategy over here okay if we assume that our strategy is 50% right we're trading the continuation of these uh large standard deviation moves right if it has a 50% chance of winning right that means that most of our trades right you know, our frequency most of our trades will be inside this band will fall inside here so 68% of your data or your trades will fall will fall between the first two standard deviations and if you look at one standard deviation you can assume this is a loss a loss so this is two losses and this is three losses and this is one win this is two wins this is three wins right so most of your data will be one loss one win one loss one win now that doesn't mean you can't get three losses in a row or four losses in a row right but look at the odds of that occurring okay you have a 2.14 percent chance of taking two losses in a row right or three losses in a row okay now if you do end up taking now it doesn't mean that you can't take three losses or four or five losses in a row but you'll find a lot of traders end up getting scared after taking two or three losses and they don't want to trade anymore right but if you stick to the strategy right look what happens okay so let's say you take three losses in a row right with a 50 50 percent with a 50 percent win rate it's very difficult for you to lose three times in a row and even if you do right it's most likely that the next trade will revert back to the mean okay so the next trade will fall within this area okay so it's most likely that your next trade will actually be a winner okay now it doesn't mean that you can't lose four times in a row or three times in a row but what means what it actually means is that over a large sample of trades all your trades are going to be most of your trades are going to be within this band right and your 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 win rate is going to be very close to 50 percent now those are very good odds right because we are not flipping a coin right you must remember when you flip a coin you either call heads or tails and if you if you call heads and you actually land on tails right you win one or you lose one so for example if you call heads and it lands on tails right that's a loss right so you lose one right now if you call heads and it lands on heads you win one right so you are only making a one percent gain or loss on each flip now the market has better odds than that okay if, when you're trading the market right you can risk one percent right to gain three percent okay now with a strategy that works 50 percent of the time and you have a risk reward of one to three those are really good odds okay and if you keep playing this game right all trading is right at the core of it all trading is is taking trades within a statistical probability right and only trading when that statistical edge occurs okay and if you keep playing that game you will end up profitable so if i just explain something simple here to you if you simply assume that you're flipping a coin right and it's a 50 50 if it lands on heads or tails okay but let's just mix up the numbers for a little bit okay let's say that every time you are correct right you win a dollar okay and every time that you are wrong you lose 90 cents okay now you have an edge okay this is a game that you should play over and over again even if you lose 10 times you should still play this game because over 10,000 
right, over 10,000 coin flips, right, you're going to keep on collecting, right, if you if you take 10,000 coin flips, okay, and over a large sample set of data, we know that on average, right, the, the strategy is going to have a win rate of 50%, so 50% of the time, you are going to be right, okay, and the other 50% of the time, you are going to be wrong, okay, so if you're winning a dollar every time you are right, and you're losing 0 0.9090 90 cents every time you lose, right, over a large sample set, you are going to be profitable, right? Now, this is basically how the market works or how you can actually be consistently profitable in the market because you only need, right, a 30% win rate or, or something that occurs 30% of the time, a strategy, or, or something that reoccurs 30% of the time for you to make profit if your strategy, if your, if your risk reward is modeled around 1 to 3%. So you're risking 1% to gain 3%. Right now, that's basically the key behind it, okay? And that's just based on an assumption. Now, there are obviously ways that we can increase the probability of um, these setups, and one of those is simply adding something like a moving average, okay? So, if you only take the trades in the direction of the moving average, so if we use the larger moving average, right, and this is basically going to give you the direction of the macro trend so you're not using the moving average as some dynamic support or resistance you're just using it to give you the average of the larger trend okay and if you tell yourself that okay for example i'm not going to take trades where price is far away from the moving average okay because we know that when price moves very far away from an average there's most likely going to be a reversion back to the mean right so i'm going to take trades that only occur close to the average right now that increases your odds of success right and if you tell yourself, right, I'm only going to take trades in the direction of the larger average, okay, so that will filter out, for example, a lot of these trades, okay, so this was a sell trade that didn't work out, but the average is basically up, right, so you're only taking trades in the direction of the larger trend, right, right, so you're basically using the moving average as a filter, okay, to filter out one side of the market, over the other, right? And that's going to reduce the number of trades you take, but it's going to be, it's going to increase the number of winning trades you get. Okay. All right. So we are on TradingView, USD, JBY on a five minute chart. Something that I didn't previously mention was that um, when you're looking for your setup, so when you're looking at your impulse uh, indicator, you want to basically be looking on a higher time frame. Now, it doesn't matter what time frame you use, it just must be high enough for you to drill down into a lower time frame to frame your risk reward parameters. And personally, I like using a one hour because, um, there's a lot of trade setups. The, the frequency of trades is is good enough, and I can at least find a trade a day. Now, what you'll see here is that we basically have highlighted the area of that uh, two standard deviation push lower that uh, frame the setup. And once we get that, we basically want to be drilling down into a lower time frame, right, to find the trade. Now, you can use this any way you want right uh, and by that I mean if you have your own style of trading pullbacks you can um, use what I taught you right to frame a trade setup and once you get a pullback you can use your own methods to to then enter the trade right you do not have to throw away anything that uh, you have or you don't have to use it in any um, specific way that I teach right but I'm gonna teach you how you can how I basically uh, trade pullbacks and if you want to do it that way, you can by all means uh, follow suit. Okay, so with that being said, what I use is a market profile tool, right? It's uh, on TradingView for free and it's this little icon here with, uh, with the bars. And what I usually do is I draw the profile from the high point to the swing low, right? And basically what this is going to give me, it's going to give me the distribution of price. Now I'm not going to get into too much detail on this tool, but basically this tool is telling you, right, where the most trade volume has taken place right within this leg now the most trade volume will be the area delineated by the straight line which is the point of control now there are other distributions in price so if you take a look up here we have a distribution so there was a, a bit of volume up there and there's a distribution here so there was some volume in this area as well right and these areas that taper out basically have the least trade volume right so those are usually rejections now we want to highlight this area 
right, with the most trade volume, and this is known as the POC, also called the point of control. And basically, this is that line in the sand between buyers and sellers, right? So below this area, sellers are in control, and above it, buyers are in control. So retesting this area, right, this area is a strong area for you to actually go for a continuation trade lower because this is an area where sellers are most likely going to come back into the market, right? And from there, what I do is I take my market profile tool again and I draw a POC of the pullback swing low to pullback swing high. So this is giving me the distribution of price within the pullback, okay? So this is now telling me that most of the traders are congregated around this area here, right? So above this level, right, buyers are in control and mostly profitable and below, right, buyers are losing money and sellers are actually making money, right? And if you just take a look at this area here, we have another distribution. You'll notice that uh, price retests that distribution and we have a reaction off of it. Okay, so these are areas that consistently, right, provide levels of support or resistance, right? And once we have our two profiles drawn, so basically you're going to have the profile of the impulse leg, right? You're going to get the distributions and then you're going to have the profile of the pullback. And what we basically want to see is once price trades below the volume of the pullback, right? We know that buyers are underwater and losing money, right? And this is an area where we want to be looking to take a trade because this is where they can potentially give up their position, right? And if they give up their position, right, if buyers close their buy positions, they're going to have to sell and that's going to cause price to drive lower. And once price drives lower and we take out a low, we will also trigger stops and that's going to cause a cascading effect, right? That will allow price to gravitate lower. Okay, so basically what we're looking for is for price on the pullback leg, right, to trade below the POC, right, and either we want to see a consolidation in this area, right, so once we're below this area, we want to see it holding, right, or retesting and rejecting. Now, you'll remember that on the trade that I took, right, we retested this area, right, and as soon as we rejected, okay, and traded back below, I took my trade here and I kept my stop above price. Okay, so that's one way to enter right and that's the safer option now the more riskier option is if you fade right so coming into this level okay you what you're going to be waiting for is sellers to come in at higher prices and we get that when price takes out a previous swing high and starts to reject and this lets us know that there's sellers in this area sitting on limit orders and why that's the case is because remember whenever price um, breaks above a high right we come close to a high okay any sellers in this leg going lower right are losing money and if they give up their position they get that that's basically going to drive price higher right so these sellers give up their position they have to exit by buying and that's going to drive price higher now once we've taken out this high there'll be stops sitting above here that again can cause price to drive higher right so we're expecting price to have a strong move higher right a very volatile move right but if we have a whole lot of sell limits right sitting above price okay when all these buyers flood in Okay, these sell limits are going to absorb all the buying and that's going to basically create a wall and every time, right, any buying comes in, it's being taken by the sellers and that's going to stop price from going higher and price is most likely going to rotate off the high and trade lower. So this is the first clue that we get that sellers are sitting in this area, right, and we can expect that because we are near the POC, right, so we can expect sellers to come in this area. So that's the first clue. Now, if you want to take a trade in that location, which is more riskier, Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for price to break the high and we're going to wait for a rejection. Okay, from this point, as soon as we get a rejection into the range of this high and this low, we're going to take a trade and keep our stop above price. And we're going to anticipate price then trading lower. Okay, but that's a, a riskier entry. But um, once you, once you uh, get the skill and you get used of looking at it, right uh, by all means you can you can take those trades right a good example is one year okay we trade above the high right we hold a little bit and then we trade back within the range okay so from this point to this point right we can start looking for sales with a stop loss above price while we are in this range <coughs> okay so basically those are the two entries 
right? The first entry is a fade entry, right? And that'll be at a level, specifically in my situation, the POC, right? I'm gonna be looking for sellers to come in at that area and I'm gonna want price to break above a high and reject. And the second entry, right? At this point, you know, if, if, if you want to take these setups um, with a higher probability, you can literally wait if it does give you for a little pullback or correction in this area. And that's that's um, a better way to take these trades. Okay, but a lot of the times they just rip lower. Okay, so that will be the first kind of entry. You're going to keep your stop at the high or possibly higher, right? You're going to give it some wiggle room, okay, just in case it wants to make one more high, right? And the second entry will be the safer trade. Once you've traded below the volume of this pullback, right? So we get our distribution of the pullback. Right, let me draw that properly. Right, with our market profile tool, it's gonna show us the mountain or the distribution, or the area where there's the most volume in this pullback. And once we trade below that level, right, and we know that buyers are upside down, we're gonna be looking for a pull. We're gonna be looking for a pullback, right, or a consolidation below the POC, right, and we're gonna to look to enter in that area, right, for the stop run. So those are the two ways you can enter. And in terms of targets, <coughs> what you're gonna want to do, so in terms of targets, right, what you're gonna want to do is draw a Fibonacci from the pullback leg to the high point, right? So once we've created a high, right, and you are now assuming that uh, you got a setup to take price lower, right, you're gonna draw that uh, Fibonacci over the swing low and the swing high, Right, so literally from the time we start rotating lower at this point, right, once the high is formed, so you pull back and once the high is formed, right, you're gonna draw a fib from this low to this high, right, and you are gonna be targeting, obviously your first target is gonna be the first swing low, and then you're gonna have a second target of 50% extension of this balance area, and your main target is gonna be a one-to-one -one of this balance area. So if you measure this balance area, take the range of this balance area and extend it out in time, extend it out in range, you get a one-to-one -one and that's gonna be where you're looking to take your profit. Okay, now this is a very powerful tool, right? And we can just go through a few examples here, right? If I just for any reason, take a look at this pullback, for example, Right, we don't reach a one-to-one, -one, okay, but we reach the 50%, right, and we reach there with precision and we turn lower. Now, if we look at, for example, this pullback, right, in this balance area, so if we take, um, sorry, if we take a range of this area down to the low, right, and we can see where price has rejected. Okay, now if we also take a pullback from this, a Fibonacci from this pullback, right, from the high down to the low, right, we can see where a 1 to 1 is and it turns on the dime. Okay, if we also look at, for example, this little pullback here, right, we take it from the high down to the low, right, and we just draw up the 1 to 1, we just fall short, right, but quite close. We take a look at this range, right from high to low. We can see where a one to one is, and we can see that's where price indeed turn, indeed did turn around. And if we look at this range, right from this high down to this low, okay, we can see where price turned around. Right, my apologies. Okay, there we go. We can see where price did around at that area okay so that's how you're gonna be setting your targets now you don't actually have to wait for price to reach these targets you could use if you can find a tight enough um, entry right within this area if it gives you a tight enough entry where you get a risk reward of one to two or one to three and the target is by the 50 percent right of the balance area then if you don't want to be greedy and want to be more conservative then by all means right you are able to take your full position off at that level. If you want a larger risk reward, you can wait for the full target. <coughs> now, personally, my trade, right, I entered around here. 
okay and my stop was around here and i took my profit around this area now this was good enough for me right i could have held it all the way down to the one to one but the idea is not to be greedy and not to stretch your 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 edge and put probabilities against you right as long as you're getting a one to two or a one to three right that's good enough but if you want to be a casanova you can by all means take profit at a one to one there's nothing stopping you so that's basically the end of this video and i really hope you you learn something if you enjoy the video please uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions let me know um like and share help someone else um please leave a like subscribe this is uh, free content and you're not really paying anything for it and i do appreciate your time and giving me your attention and i just hope that i can further help and better uh traders out there that are struggling to make something out of the markets so hopefully this video was really insightful for you and uh till the next video stay safe and thank you for your time okay cheers